Ooh, hello everyone. Welcome back to Hexen. Um, where have I left myself? Not a very convenient position whatsoever. I'm going to be recording this episode. Normally I would record three episodes on a day, that's a week's worth, and then I'll wait for people to say what they have to say, and then come back for the next three the next week, but I'm going to be away this weekend, so I am recording this before I've seen all your comments uh, on the previous week. It is currently approximately Thursday. So, let's just uh, go ahead with all of this. We've got three of the four um, gears here, and we want to go up stairs. That's right, I was hanging out here and I was going, you know what? This terrifies me, so... I'm wondering if we should probably be using the weapon as more mana, but at the same time that seems like a terrible idea because of the nature of that particular weapon. Are we even hitting this? I think suspect not, maybe. Can I? Let's try it from downstairs. Eh. Can hit it from here, so we should probably do it this way. Yeah, that got properly gibbed. Good old gibbs. I believe in the Quake engine, a gib was simply formed when your um, HP went sufficiently negative, which was probably one of my favourite ways of determining whether something should die a little bit or a lot. So, save mana this way, there we go. Uh, I do recall, in fact, that in Deathmatch, your health would go considerably negative, and honestly, I think that was probably uh, an intentional design decision. What are you doing? We're going to have to um, make up a lot of these quartz flasks that we've... Well, I wouldn't want to say wasted, because they've kept us alive, but we're certainly hoping to find a few, you know, to replenish our dwindling supply here. And hopefully at a time when we don't have to worry about excuse me, um, <laughs> having to use them again. It does seem to be that they stock you up with 25 of the damn things and then you, they make you use as many as you possibly can. Alright, that'll do. Um, <laughs> make you use as many as you can, try not to run out, and then they stock you up again. So. It's not um it's not a very consistent supply of items. It's a it's a resource that you have to manage correctly and probably more so as we get into the game a little bit further. I'm fully expecting that once we get towards the end of the game, we're really gonna be looking for uh, using these effectively rather than you know, wastefully like I have been. There's plenty of mana around these places though, so that's good. How have I failed to kill this thing? <laughs> Of course, we can try and get HP back, but most of the time that does not seem to work. Well, that's encouraging that there's a giant, presumably theoretically bottomless pit. But in practice, not bottomless. Even in computers is uh, an impossibility at the moment. Although, I suppose bottomless is really down to the, uh, the player's patience when it comes to things like this, rather than... A, you know, literal definition of infinity. Which is to say that because you'll never get there, you'll probably just get bored and reload. I bet you could do it using those um, teleporters that I was telling you about a while ago. I don't know what happens if it died and I wasted mana. Probably a bit bad. Oh, we did pick up plenty of green mana actually, so I feel a bit better about that, having realised. Is there one here still alive? No, right, good. Uh, okay, let's just be down here, that'll work. Um, thinking back to the Unreal style teleporters that you can step through, you can also fall through. In fact, I made several non-Euclidean maps using that exact technique. Uh, you can make corridors that bend the wrong way and don't fit in the geometry that you have available. Uh, try to min-max this mana a little bit, I think I will. Um, and you can make... I made a, a corridor that curved downwards, which was... Uh, I was quite impressed with it myself. I, know, I made it myself, and I'm basically patting myself on the back for having done so, but... Yeah, I did enjoy making it. Um, just by angling... The, the... Teleporters so that... You know, one of them... Reached another one at a junction, and then... 
if that angle's vertical rather than horizontal, then you end up with a downwards or upwards bending. Oh, that reminds me, I did make a um like a, a space station. I don't think it worked too well, which is a shame. I felt like it could have been better anyway. Um Yeah. Simply by curving upwards instead of downwards, and I was running around the inside of what's this done? I'm scared of it. <laughs> running around the inside of the uh, traditional orbital type space station. That was pretty cool. Anyway, I don't know what happens if you are allowed to, if you have both sides of it transparent. I don't know if you could do that. But you might have been able to, and that would be really sweet, because it means that you could fall down a pit and just keep falling forever. Let's um, not waste mana on an Essen. Excuse me, how many Essens do you want there to be? I don't know if they teleport in at an increased rate um, as a result of being on a harder difficulty level or on a later level, just per se. That is a Minotaur. Now this probably goes up later, but that switch there we have seen before, it's essentially a switch version of the portals. So that'll take us to another level. And I don't mean, you know, in the, in the, in the game play way, I mean suddenly we're going to be a much better player. I was taught by a kid at school, always look upwards on lifts. He was much better at Quake 2 than I was. Like, considerably better. He could... It seemed like his rocket launcher worked better than mine, you know? But I was... I was one of those people who was really pretty good against my own mates. Except him, obviously. Uh, but... You know, against real people online, I was absolutely horrendous. So I was kind of expecting something to happen, so maybe we have to, uh... Let's go to that other level then, we'll see if we can find the fourth gear here. Unless putting the other three gears in does something. Let's try that first. No, not that one. Hmm. Hmm. Apparently that one. Nah, it doesn't look like it did. Uh... I'm reluctant to go to the other level because I have a strong feeling that it's a wrong thing to do. But at the same time, I'm kind of bored running around this one, so let's let's have pastures new. That is not where the other level is. Let's not use the map when those things can come up and stab us in the back whilst we're looking at it. That's a good idea. Uh, hello. Use a mana. Stay alive. Uh, mana is the easier thing to come by right now because those corners have several in them back in the other and there's plenty of there, so fine. More caves. I don't remember this. Or oh, well, maybe do. I think there's a yeah, there's a building on the side. I remember this level well all of a sudden. It needs to be back here. This is definitely one of the uh, hub levels, so it's not... Oh, that was extremely bad. Don't do what I did. Um, I don't think this is the door that was opened by the secret level earlier. I mean, I guess we just keep playing. It doesn't matter if the, um, if the gear is actually here. It would be nice if the gear were here. It doesn't have to be. I'm not demanding it of the game. You get 3 HP every so often, and I mean it is a way of turning mana into HP as well as dead enemies, which is the point of mana. Um, obviously it deads the enemy a little bit slower than it would do if you hadn't used it. But, I mean there's no reason to go there, so why would I? FML, am I right? MFW. DAE? DAE and MFW. When F FML. You know what I'm saying. You all do it. Does this work? I don't know if the vertical axis in. Oh, shut I don't know if the vertical axis of me makes that big a difference. To, um. You got me somehow. To, to the projectiles. Apparently, yes. Have better timing, will you? Uh, I believe 42% health has come out as being called Damien. It's very brave of you. Um, <laughs> I believe Damien was saying that early on 
that Firestorm against these is useless, but it does stop them all doing stuff at the same time. Um, it causes them all to put their shields up and gives me some breathing range. It's actually... I mean, it's more... It's more defensively helpful than offensively. Okay. But also, let's get out of here, because I'm scared. Uh, you know, defensively helpful is still helpful. And I don't think their shield counts as shield when it's shooting me, so that's pretty nice. Not like the damn Heresiarch. The same day, Mim was also saying <laughs> the the shield on the Heresiarch lasts 30 seconds and can be recast, you know, while it's up. Which is BS. You are obviously not a slaughter, so there you go. That's a flechette. You dumbass. Really not what I meant to do. As you can imagine, uh, that's why I'm trying not to change away from the quartz flask for any reason. Ow. Is that reaching? Can't really tell because I don't have the time to... Oh, that's definitely not reaching. I don't have the time to watch before the shots come in and got me. I think it's slightly... Oh! Slightly too far away. Uh, we need to not die because it would be extremely boring to do all this again. Let's just do it like this. I'm pretty sure that's a slaughter there, but it's not shot me for a while. Maybe it's not. I believe there's a cave over there. Unless I'm thinking of Thunder Bluff. It definitely opens, you can tell. But it is not this day. Didn't min-match that mana properly either. Well. I oh, we need a key. Understood. More of this. So you can't, um, you can't drain them whilst they've got the shield up, which is kind of pesky. I feel like a, a touch attack like shield, like a drain, should work through the shield. That's probably a design decision I would make were this my game. You know, it is not my game, not my decision to make, and it's also literally 21 years old now, so it's a bit too late to complain. I missed playtesting, which saddens me to some extent. We've got a quartz flask back, so that is useful. Sounds like there's an Etienne or two down here. No, but that's probably going to turn that on and do other stuff besides. Not. There were Etienne, so, so I wasn't far wrong. Sounds like a good time to use this, because it'll hurt more than one enemy. And hurt them a lot. And we have a lot of green mana, so... That seems like a good, good reason to use Firestorm. For now. Get this back out. Uh, yeah, I'm not touching that because it's obviously a trap. I want to know where these came from, though. There must be another door that's now open down here. No? Just wondering, were they? <coughs> anything else open before I do anything scary? No. Right, I guess we'll get that book then. Um, you know, good idea, bad idea. I do like the motifs in this game. Fudge. Uh, we know what to do. That worked quite well. Close Quarters um, Wraith Verge is fairly effective because the Wraiths don't have to go far to find their next target. Especially when the, there's no pillars or anything. Which is probably why they didn't reach these ones quite so well because they're on the other side of those walls. That sounded like it was over there. Did it not? My speaker's on the right way. I mean my headphones. My head speakers. <laughs> they are, right? Head speakers, man. Pick up the mana, don't worry about how much mana you get from it. And then go back out this way because a good rogue goes around the back. Rogue suit from behind. Liar! Liar? That's how I uh, yell for help, really. <laughs> Just calling some, uh, some non entity a liar. Ow. Jeez Louise. I'm trying to get some damage done to these close quarters is not a good idea. Do not recommend it. I'm hearing a amplified quantity of these bishops right now. Oh, maybe it's just one in its place. Very well. Bit of HP here is very helpful. Obviously that makes those go down, so let's not do that just yet. There is a cave back here. But it does remind me of Thunder Bluff, so... I'm not far away, right? We've all played it. 
you know when you go over the bridge that goes down into the middle of the main um, the main rock of thunder and there's a cave inside there is that a dungeon or a oh I found a key interesting was that always there can't remember what's inside though it might be um might be some crafts Unactivated Afrex. Orcalator. A place we can drop down into and then presumably get back out of. So we'll... Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, we'll do so. Pick up the HP. That was not even related. That's just a random metin teleporting in while I'm trying to make myself better. So there's a switch over there with a porcalator. We found the rusted key, which opens that. And there's a switch here. Which I think is the first thing we do. <laughs> See? Rogue's doing from behind. So we press this and run away. Just have to get it. Get some of my HP back. Gonna need my mana back. You know how it is. You know how mana's is. Don't need to be up there. It looks like it's just got things in, so I don't care about that too much. Can we just run, do you think? Yeah. So this will activate the Afrit. No doubt. So maybe some doubt. Okay. Of course, in the old days, now I think about it, you wouldn't really be able to tell. Maybe you could. It would be difficult to tell how much of a drop that is. Um, which would make you very reluctant to try it. But now you can just look straight down. Take all the fun out of it. Huh. Let's go this way. Find that Etin. That Cretin Etin. Open this door, maybe? Nice. Yeah, just shoot each other. You beat that though. I'll beat it. I'll do this one. You get that one, I'll get this one. One of my favourite features of Quake 2, Akbo nothing, was the, uh, pardon me, um, the adrenaline, which permanently increased your health by one whenever you pick one up. Which, so are you hurting you? I don't think so. You know how this works. Um, which was great. Because over the course of the game, you could end up with maybe 15 or 20 more max HP. And by now, I'm probably on 110 max HP. Meaning I didn't really have to worry. I could basically take one more direct hit from being a noob, right? Why are all these noises coming from? I don't really like it. Um, which would be really handy in games like this where, as you get along, you just need that little bit extra to tank a little bit more damage than you have been. Notice how those doors do not leave the sector that they're on. And they are full height. That is terrible timing. I deserve everything I get. There's so much HP right here. Especially in that it's great. Ow. Actually, came off worse. I'm just gonna do this. Honestly, I'm feeling that mana is a little bit less precious than my time right now. Doing alright. Like, any mana that you use, it's kind of Isaac type strats. Any mana that you use, anything that you use that could heal you. Or rather, anything that you use that can't heal you, but prevents you from taking damage, has effectively healed you, right? So I could use the mana to try and get back all the HP that I lose by failing at killing things. Um, you know, by wasting blue mana on trying to drain Etins or these bastards. Whereas in fact, it's equivalently useful to spend that mana on Wraith Purge and not take the damage in the first place. Probably more valuable. At least they're giving us our quartz flasks back in quantity right now. Stop spawning things when I haven't finished killing the stuff that's already here. Can't close the doors, unfortunately. There is more mana if I need it. Quartz file here. Flasks, no? Flask. More mana here and here, but this is obviously a, a trap. It's not trap. Mm, probably not a trap. Okay. Get 
take all of this without failing at min-max. I know that I don't... I know I say I don't like to min-max too much, but... Sometimes a tiny amount is not even remotely too much. I don't want to have to spend blue mana to try and get HP back when I can... Not. <laughs> right? And if I have to... Then it seems like the ideal way of doing it is simply to make sure that I have... You know, the maximum value out of each mana collectible. And this probably opens a thing at the end. Spawned in a bunch of baddies. See, that makes them stop. Oh, there's not a bad guy there. I thought there was, I just fire anyway. It makes them stop, which means you can run past them and get away from them. Which I think is quite valuable, even though it does cost me some uh, HP. But it doesn't risk me accidentally firing a green projectile. The athletes are awake. To hell with it. You all die. There you go. So much fun. Very much appreciate that being part of my life right now. Yeah, there you are. I'm just going to shoot you. There is more mana back at the entrance as well, if you recall. Interesting that we got the key for the door in the place where the door was. That's fairly uncommon, I think. don't really want to drain you. I've got 99 HP until you shoot me in the face. So I'm going to try... <laughs> like, shoot you from a distance. But you keep putting your damn shield up. Those are very frustrating to deal with as the cleric. And not because they have high HP, but because I keep reflecting my damn shots back. Pick up these now. Well, we've opened this, we found a second book, and I think... What is this book called? Liber Obscura. I'm going to pick this book up at the start of the next episode, so thank you for watching this one. Uh, I will probably not read any comments for some time, and of course this is the first of three episodes that I will be recording, so do leave your comments, I really appreciate it, um, but I won't necessarily be able to talk about them in videos for another few episodes, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.